Bibles to the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs 31. I appreciate all the all those that made mom's moms. Amen. Psalms 31. I'm going to look at verse number 10. The Word of God says, Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. That word virtuous is not as limited in the, the Hebrew text as what it is in the American language. Uh, it, it's suggesting that her character and her ability, amen, it is great. I mean, just amazing. And so I, I want to look at this morning uh, 10 moms, and I'm going to be fast. I'm not going to spend 15 minutes on each mom. But I want to look through the Word of God at some moms, and I want to look at what we can learn about from these moms. And I do believe that uh, probably uh, most of these moms you can apply to your life. There may be a one that a lot of uh, you ladies uh, will get there someday, or maybe you ladies are at. But I, but I want to look at these ladies in the Word of God who were moms. And uh, I, 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 I want to look first of all at uh, that mother there in Genesis chapter number 15. A woman who her name is Sarah. And when I look at Sarah, maybe this is dealing with some ladies that you're not yet a mom, or maybe some that aren't married. Uh, but I look at this woman, Sarah, and we can find that, that she is childless. She's married to her husband, Abraham. And, and as she's married, uh, we find that uh, she waited many years before she became a mom, even 15 beyond what she had expected. And uh, so initially, Sarah, she doubts God. And she, she, she laughs at the promise of God. It can't just be, I'm old in my age, am I going to have a child? And we know that God does provide for her son, and his name is Isaac. And we find that uh, as she has been patient with God, we find that God sometimes pushes us to our maximum amount of patience. Do you think that Sarah was pushed to her maximum amount of patience this morning? Any of your moms ever been pushed to your maximum amount of patience? You wonder, is this ever going to happen? Will it ever be? My patience is wearing thin. It's, it's wearing out. But we find that God comes through even when it seems like patience has been maximized. Maybe there's some moms in here you feel that way. Maybe it's not longing for a child, but it's maybe waiting for an answer or waiting to see some results that you feel are godly results and things that God has, has promised you. But I want to encourage you moms that even when you waited to your maximum impatience, be patient that God will come through with His promises. There's something about a mother and God. Amen. It's a unique role. Hey, I, some of my earliest memories of God myself was my mom praying over me sick at night and whispering the name Jesus. My dad worked shift work, and so uh, the stability of always having family devotions at night for, for, for many times would fall on my mom, that we would have that time of the Word of God and prayer together because my dad wasn't available to be able to do it at our bedtime because of his work schedule. And so my earliest memories, and you know, there may have been days where, where mom scratched her head or she was exhausted because of life, uh, but when, when her patience was at maximum, God came through. And I know that as children grow, the seasons and the responsibilities in life, they all change. You know, uh, maybe parenting is uh, setting one side of challenges, successfully accomplished the side, to find that now there's a new set of challenges that come with, with this age group. And, and I think that every mom in here, whether your child is a newborn or whether your child is, is well up in years, you'll know that there are some challenges that come to motherhood. How about it? But you know, 
But Sarah, her example is this, is that when patients are at maximum, God comes through right on time. Moms, trust God with whatever that thing is that seems to be wearing on and steer to your heart. Maybe no one else will know, but I want you to know that Sarah is an example of how patient mothers should be. Mothers are patient. Patient with meals, patient with feeding, patient with learning, patient with giving. Amen. Know that God is patient and God will answer if, Mom, you will remain faithful. The next mom I want to look at is a mother that's closely entwined with Sarah. Her name was Hagar. We, we read about her uh, there in Genesis chapter number 21. We find that if you know much about the story of Hagar, you'll know that Sarah was older in age and she staggered at the promises of God and she laughed. She didn't think God could give her a child, so she called her handmaid Hagar to lie with her husband Abraham and they conceived a son and, and she wanted her husband to have a son. We find that things begin to get complicated and sticky. When we try to do things in the flesh, it gets complicated and sticky. we got to trust God in the Spirit. But we find that now we have Ishmael and now we have Isaac on the scene. And you'll find that Sarah, uh, she begins the mystery of Hagar. And things just aren't working out well. So God tells Abraham, he said, I want you to send Hagar and Ishmael. I want you to send them away. We find that in a promise that God gives to Abraham, that he says to Abraham, Abraham, as Sarah wants you to do, I want you to send Hagar and Ishmael away, and I will make out of Ishmael a nation the same that I will uh, of Isaac, and, and I will take care of, of, of Hagar and Ishmael. And so he gives that promise to Abraham, and he sends Hagar and Ishmael away. We know that they're going to the desert. The Bible says that there they are in the desert. And, and, and all of a sudden, there, there's no water. And so uh, Hagar can hardly stand it. There it is. Her and her son are going to die. And so there in the heat of the day, the Bible says that, that Hagar puts Ishmael underneath the bush. And then she goes to an area far away that is an arrow shot away uh, from where her son is. And she sits down and she's thinking they're going to die. The Bible says that she begins to pray. Can you imagine the way that it feels to, to uh, 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 Hagar? She's still a mom. She, she didn't ask for all the situations to, to be as they are. She simply was following the command of, uh, of her master. And now she's in this predicament. But she loves her son nonetheless. The Bible says, and I, I, I love when you read there in Genesis chapter number 21. The Bible says that she cried and she prayed to God. And as she's praying to the Lord, I'm sorry, Genesis 25. Or it is Genesis 21. Got my stuff. In Genesis 21, the Word of God says, And God heard the voice of the lad, the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the hat, but the lad, and hold him in your hands, for I will make of him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went, and she filled the bottle with water, and gave the lad to drink. And, and God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness, and, and he became an archer. You see, here it is that, that, that as we read about Hagar, here is the woman that, 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 that she trusted God, and God provided. God will never break the yoke. God will always help you in motherhood. Whatever your challenge is, amen, God hears your prayer. Do you hear 
here tonight today, Bob. Whatever your challenge is, whatever the season is, God hears your prayer. And He's in motherhood with you. We look later at the Word of God in Genesis chapter number 25. We read of a woman named Rebecca. We find that Rebecca was a faithful woman and she obeyed God by marrying Abraham's son Isaac. And uh, 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 the Word of God says that, that she became pregnant with twins. And uh, uh, as you read through, you'll, you'll find that, uh, that, that the, the, the youngest grabs the oldest heel. And we find that the, God speaks to, to the mother of these twins, Rebecca, and says that the younger is going to serve the older. We know that there's a lot of deceit that happens, and for the sake of time, I'm going to move on kind of quickly. Uh, but we find that, that, that part of the deceit, Sister Tina, we find that, 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 that Rebecca really plays a part in, in really uh, 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 with Jacob deceiving. But when you look and you see that she was following Sister Rachel, she was following what God had already told her and promised her. See, I want to tell you, moms, God will speak to your hearts. And others may not understand. But when God speaks to your heart, you have to lead your children in the direction He gives. Amen? Someone may not understand why you pray with your children. Someone may not understand why you don't allow them to do certain things. Someone may not understand why you would invest in them to go to Christian school or home school or whatever your circumstance is. But when God speaks to your heart, even though you may be misunderstood, when God speaks, you've got to follow. Moms, what has God spoke to your heart about your children? Oh, follow through with it. You'll find that then there is Jacob, who he, he, he attempts to marry uh, 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 Rachel, but he's went to Lee instead. The Word of God goes on to say that here it is that, that Leah gives some several sons, but uh, as he works for those seven years, Sister Jan, that, that Rachel was unable to give right away. But we find that she does bear him two sons, and those two sons, the second of them, uh, we find that she dies in, in childbirth. Uh, Leah and Rachel had to, 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 to be married to the same man, and uh, because of that, there were troubles that maybe no one else had saw. They fought for his attention. There may be times as a mom that you're put in situations that are a little less than comfortable. You ever been there because of your child? You're in a situation that is a little less than comfortable. I think Rachel speaks of that woman who's in situations that's a little less than comfortable. But even in these positions where she is not happy, she goes through those trials and she trusts God and God blesses her even if she's in a place that she doesn't necessarily want to be in. How many of you know that you don't pick the personality of your children? And how many of you know that you don't pick the decisions that your children make? And how many of you know that sometimes your children may disappoint you or things may turn out the way that you've not dreamed of or planned of? But here is a mom who is an example that no matter if things are a little less than optimal, if we will trust God, God will bless you in the long term, mom. Amen? Some of you deal with situations things that are a little less than comfortable. God has not called you to be in control of every situation. But God has called you to be happy and trust Him in the middle of every situation. Mom, God will bless you if you will bless Him. Then we find that there's a mother with a clan. Her name is Jochebed. Do you know who she is? And there's a law that goes out across the land that every baby boy should be killed. But old Jochebed, she, she gives birth to a baby boy. She looks down at that lovely little baby boy named Moses, and she hides him away for three months. She said, I, 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 can't, I can't annihilate his life. I, God has a plan for him. No matter what anyone else 
things. Are you listening to me? God has a plan for him. No matter what any other rule or regulation or anyone else says, God has a plan for my child. And so while others were throwing their baby into the now, Jacob then made a little basketball and put her baby inside of it. And she devised everything just right that when Pharaoh's daughter was at the now, as she sent that baby down and she said to her daughter, Miriam, Miriam, go ahead and make sure that, that Pharaoh's daughter gets baby Moses. And that's exactly what happened. And because of mom's faithfulness, Miriam ran ahead. She saw that Pharaoh's daughter pulled that baby out of the now. And she loved on that baby. And Miriam said, I know a wet nurse. I know someone who can nurse and take care of that baby. And God worked at the Jochebed, was able to nurse her very own baby. And because Jochebed believed that there was a plan for this baby, amen, God delivered the nation of Israel. You've got to believe, Mom, that God has a plan for your son and for your daughter. Amen. No matter what anyone else says, no matter what circumstances may surround it, God has a plan. And Mom, you can birth and believe and bring that plan to pass. You can be a jock of that. Amen. Amen. Love on that child. Educate that child. Amen. Even when it's hard, amen. Let go and provide for that child in the way that's best for that child. Amen. Because God has a plan for every child that's born. And mom, sometimes your hand will be the hand that will change the world. Because you believe God with a plan. Next, I don't even know this mother's name. The Bible doesn't even give it to us. All we know is that one day she was going to give birth to a boy named Samson. But the angel of the Lord appeared unto her and told her that she was going to have a child. Her and her husband, Manoah, she wasn't to drink any strong drink. There was no razor that was to come upon that child's head. He was to have long hair. God spoke that. The one thing that I do know is this. There was probably a day, Sister Tina, when Samson probably got tired of that hair falling in his face when he was eating his pizza and spaghetti loaves. <laughs> he said, I just want to cut this off, Bobby. He said, oh, no, you're not. Oh, no, you're not. God said no. And when God says no, I'm going to enforce the rules. You see, here is a mom, amen, that although Samson probably stood out, the other boys maybe had their heads shaved and buzzed and a crew cut. Maybe some of the boys, they looked real nice with their hair all uh, uh, groomed and, and, and waxed and whatever you want to call it, amen. Maybe they blow dry and it was a big, uh, a luxurious haircut. Uh, but Samson couldn't do that because mama said, God said no. I want to tell you something, moms. Uh, there may be times where your children, you'll have to stand up and say, no, we are going to follow the rules of God's Word. No matter what anyone else says, no matter what anyone else said, does, God has spoke to me, and we are going to honor God. And we find as an example in the Word of God, amen, that here it is. She was not being bullied out of her position. She was standing for the things of God. Amen. There's no other reason on earth. Amen. To change the reasons of heaven. So mom stand upon the word of God. Bottom line. Yes. What a man Samson became. Yes, he made mistakes. But that wasn't mom's fault. Mama did her job. But in the end, Samson won. And one day, Mom was faithful. We come to the Word of God. This isn't going to affect everybody, but let me just say this. This does affect some. We read of a woman who is Sister Jan, a magnificent mother-in-law. <clears throat> she was a magnificent mother-in-law. Maybe there's some mother-in-laws here. Let me give you a little word of advice from what the Word of God says. This is the character that God gives. Here it is that the Bible says that there was a woman who had two sons, they married in a foreign, uh, foreign land, and famine came, and, 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 and they had moved. The Bible says that this woman lost her, 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 her husband and her sons. All she had left was her two daughter-in-laws. So here it is. The Bible talks about Naomi and her daughter-in-laws, Orpha and Ruth. 
mother-in-law, listen to this. Here it is that she told her daughter-in-law, stay here in the land. There's nothing for you back in Bethlehem, Judah. But there's one thing that the mother-in-law, Naomi, had already given them. And that was a godly example and a love and a commitment to God Almighty. And, and, and Ruth and, and, and Orpha saw that. They saw that good mother-in-law. And mom said, mom-in-law said, no, you need to stay here. And, and guess what? There was one feisty little lady that said, no, I've seen enough in you that I want to do life your way. Amen. You've exampled me. And so what did Mama Law do? She didn't grit her teeth and, and she didn't uh, throw a pouty fit and she didn't uh, breach our relationship with her. She said, oh, okay, it's not what I advise, but come on. Mother-in-law, sometimes you just got to like, no, don't you? Yep. They can, they can either take or leave your advice. You know, sometimes your advice can be wrong. Naomi's was. But even though her daughter-in-law didn't follow her advice, she said, I'm going along with you. We find that she comes, she provides for her mother-in-law, her mother-in-law is faithful, her mother-in-law doesn't try to manipulate, but her mother-in-law sees what can be the very best for her, even though it could be a loss for her personally. Amen. And we know that her daughter-in-law eventually becomes the grandmother of King David, and she becomes in the lineage of Jesus Christ, all because she was a good mother-in-law. Mother-in-law, love on your daughter-in-law. Amen. You can give them advice, but if they don't take What a great example that we find that uh, Naomi is. I gotta move quickly, and I'm gonna do that within the next three minutes. I'm gonna give each one of these three. We find Hannah. We find that she, her heart is broken. She comes before God. She prays. She petitions. God gives her a son. Uh, we find that his name is, is Samuel. We find that she had made a commitment with God that she would give her son back to God. We find that when he becomes of age, she gives her son back to God, even as painful and difficult as that may be. I want you to know, moms, your children are not yours. They are God's. They're only alone for a little bit of a season. So take that season, enjoy, and then allow God to do great exploits in their life because you release them to God. You've done your part. You've shown your faithfulness. Now be faithful in giving them back to God with whatever God calls them to be. If God calls them to Africa to be a missionary, let them be a missionary. If God calls them to Walmart uh, to work, let them go to Walmart to work. If God calls them to be a doctor, let them be a doctor. If God calls them to work at MI, let them work at MI. Whatever it is, allow God to work in them what He wants to do in them and let them be the best that they can be for God. But you better bring them to the house of God regular. That they know God. And they know that God is the one they need to live for. We find Elizabeth. We find Mary. We find that Elizabeth, uh, 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 her, her baby bounced inside of her with, with, with the power of the Holy Ghost when Mary came. And, uh, and, and she, she was pregnant with the Messiah. We need to teach our children to move in the Holy Ghost. And hold to the promises of God even when others don't understand. And the last mom is Mary. Now I know there can be a lot said about Mary, and we don't exalt Mary as, as being some type of a saint. But I do this morning look at her exampleship, and this is it. She believed when everybody else left. She stood at the cross. She knew his innocence. And she humbly stood at the cross. Because she believed he was the son. Moms, I believe the greatest position you can take is that position that Mary did. That you stand humbly at the cross and trust in Him as the Lord and Savior. Everybody else can go away, but I'm staying at the cross. I'm keeping my eyes up on Him. Would you stand with me this morning? Would every mom make their way up here this morning? Every mom just make your way across the front. No mom make the top. Amen. Make your way. Amen. If you need to bring little ones with you, that's fine. If you need to sit, feel free to sit in the pew.
Moms, I know your life is busy. Now, I don't want to upset anybody's philosophy, but I'm going to tell you the Word of God, and I'm telling you the truth. Let me just put a little disclaimer here first. In no way do I feel that women are subservient to men. No way do I. I think God has created man and woman, and, and he, he authored marriage, and it's a wonderful thing. As a man and a woman, they come together no longer two flesh but one. And then you have children. There are some that can have blended families, and that's a wonderful thing, and wonderful gift as you allow God to do the blending. But number one is your priority to your husband. Your children, they come after marriage. And you know what? They're going to go and you're still going to have your marriage. So marriage is number one. Now, there may be times, Sister Jan, you can testify to this. It might seem like the kids are out there with precedence because there's diapers to be changed, laundry to be done, food to be cooked. But there's a responsibility of a husband and a wife with each other as well. And then there's the task of taking care of children. Now, I know that I've not been there, and I don't understand everything even the way my wife does. She's there 24 7. But I know you're pulled in a lot of directions. You know, you want to make sure that they're eating good and that physically they're taken care of, and you want to make sure that they're educated. And uh, then you, you want to make sure that there are provisions. And as they grow, their needs change, and what you have to provide for them changes as well. But God does not change. And God will always be your resource of resources. But in all the things of life, be like me. Humbly stay at the cross, looking at our Lord and Savior. It's a quiet position. She knew he was innocent. Though all the world cried out guilty, she did. But yet she was faithfully there. Not just as a mom, but as a believer in God Almighty. Your first position is your relationship with God. That should supersede everything else. And then as being a mom, your greatest role is to point that out. To Jesus. Bobby, you said this morning your mom prayed for you. My mom prays for me every day. She has told me that. I know she does. Every day. All day long. Sister Rachel, what your mom gave you, the knowledge of the Word of God, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now she's with him. And one day your faith will let me do that. And because of what she passed on, now you pass on. Moms, be faithful. Be faithful. Love Jesus and love your family. And know today that you are appreciated. Amen. I'd like to pray for you. Amen. If you'd like to come in, husbands, children, gathering behind your, your moms, those that you love, I don't want anyone to fill up the help. Just gather in. Put a hand on them. Amen. Let's pray. And just ask God to bless our moms today.